down to save a wretch like me. Over now, I'm found with one. Now I see to his grace the top my heart. And grace my feet it really bad grace up here the hour I first believed Have you ever been in this verse? Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. His grace hath brought me safe thus far. Oh, and my grace, it's going to lead me on home. The Lord has promised good to me. His word, my hope, it's joy. As life endures, when we've been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. God's holy praise and when we first begun begun God's mercy, God's grace. Put on those faces. Now, why is it that we would send money around the world, but we wouldn't want to live next door to kids like that? Got quiet. I had everything all set up and had the message and everything else, but I'm going to bounce around a little bit here this morning. I'm going to start in Ephesians, the second chapter.
starting with verse 1. Father, I pray you just be with us, Lord. Father, I pray this is the direction you're sending. This message is only for me, that's okay. But I don't think so. And you hath he quickened or made alive. Who were dead in trespasses? Is that true? God has made us alive. It's nothing we could do ourselves. But yet, yeah, meet some church folks that really think that they're the greatest thing in the world. They've got it all down and all covered, and they've got all this and all that. And sometimes we just forget. It was all about Him. And His grace and His mercy. Because I don't know about you, but if I got what I deserved, I've been dead a long time. But God loved me just because. If I if there was a guy I could identify with the scripture, it'd be David. I mean, my goodness. Look at what this guy did. Over and over again there were problems. But God said he's a man after my own heart. Why? Because in the middle of all his problems and all his failures and everything else, he loved his God. He did that. It's God's grace that brought us to this place. You can never work hard enough. You can never live great enough. You can never give enough to cleanse you up. You can. But you know what? If you are saved, you will give and you will work. You can't help it. Yep. How many of you brag on your wife or your kids? How many of you do that? You do that? Yeah. I mean, I brag on my wife all the time. She gets mad. She can't stand it. I embarrass her to death. But guess what? I look in those eyes, and there is a faithfulness to Christ that passes everything else. I don't care if we don't agree about the ten chips. A miracle win. <laughs> well, that I'm working on. <laughs> but I don't care. Because I look at this child of God that I've spent these years with. And she knows what grace is. Tell me. This grace. It reaches down. When it looks like we have just failed again and again, God's mercy and God's grace says, Child, I love you. <coughs> it is not an excuse to sin. Paul tells us about that. It's not. Because if you use that for an excuse to sin, then guess what? Maybe you didn't get saved in the first place. That's something to think about, isn't it? True. There have been folks that have been in churches their whole life and never got saved. They get educated. They got all these things. They can tell you what songs to sing. They can tell you how to make a program and everything else. They may stand up and preach from a pulpit, but they've never been saved. It's something you can't do. It's by grace. Where in time past you walked according to the course of this world. And then did we ever. According to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worked in the children of disobedience. We were there. Isn't that true? Yeah. Man, I look at kids that come in. I look at folks that come in. And I'm telling you, it's God's grace. It is such a privilege to be a pastor of a church where people with problems come. 
I want you to know that. Because I've asked God for that. So what were you thinking? I was thinking I want to do what God wanted me to do. And I was thinking that this is what this church wants to do is what God wants to do. Amen? Amen. Now, if you're looking for people who promise well, which are the folks with problems in the church? Never mind. <laughs> Guess what? We've all got them, don't we? Yeah. We've all got them. Amen? Amen? We do. Different types. But we've got them. It's by grace that we are saved. If you come this morning and you're church, that is, you've been to church off and on your whole life. Well, that's okay. But God has tried to reach you over and over and over again. Because He loves you. When God created Adam and Eve, we go right back to that point when He was walking in the garden. You know what it was for? It was for fellowship. That's exactly what it was for, wasn't it? He didn't need to create Adam. But he did because he wanted this back and forth. And you know what? You do too. You don't want to be alone, do you? How do you know that going to a place is always more fun when you take somebody that you want to be with you there? I mean, going to the ocean is great. Going over to Pismo Beach is cool. You know? seeing right on the route to Big Sur and all that. But you know what? God's designed us not to make this road alone. How do you know that? That's a fact. That's why everybody needs somebody. And that's why Christians need to come to God's house. Because we need each other. And this road, it's wide enough that we can walk it together. But it's narrow enough that we have to do it with the Lord. Can we? That's what it takes. See, I love less. But guess what? Less is relationship with Christ. It's less than the Lord. My relationship with the Lord, it's me and the Lord. But it's wide enough for all of us to do it together. Because God, as He's running the whole universe, when I fall on my knees and I cry out, God, everything is put on hold. He listens. He's able to do it all. And that's His grace, His mercy. And He says, among whom also we all had our conversation, or the way we lived our life in times past, and the lusts of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, and you know, the mind and were by nature, the children of what? Wrath. Did you notice how much anger is in the world today? That seems to be the key driving force. You listen to talk radio and there's anger. You listen to music, there's anger. You listen to people talk, there's anger. Hear it on the street, there is anger. That's of the world. It better not be in the church. Because when it gets in, it festers. That anger's there. Now the Bible says be angry and sin not. The world hasn't figured out how to do that. Because the world's angry about all the wrong things. If the world understood what was happening, they'd be angry at Satan for what he's done to them. Not fall down and worship him, but they do. We've got churches all over. They call themselves churches all over. And Jesus Christ is not preached in those churches as the risen Lord God. Remember what we say, man, you can or not. That's okay. I'm not going to change anything. I'm still going. But God who is rich in mercy. And that's what I desperately needed and what we need. You need is God's mercy. Is that true? Amen. When we mess up, we fess up. Randy said that's the cheesiest thing in the world, but he likes it and it's true. What's that? That it's cheesy? No, it works. Both. Both. Because you know what? 
I started that with a youth group. They got it, and they would do it to each other. They said, hey, you know why? Because it works. Because it is truth. So simple. We can't hide from God. God never intended for us to hide from Him. But He did intend for us to look at Him and say, God, what do you want from me? That is just to love Him. But God, who is rich in mercy, for His great love wherewith He loved us. Even when we were dead in sin. Oh my goodness. Did you know God loved you even when you were just a rotten, nasty sinner? Did you know God loved you when you were sitting in a pew and being a hypocrite and pretending? God loved you anyway. And don't tell me you didn't do that, son. Oh, I'm a nice person. No, you weren't. I wasn't. <laughs> Even when we sometimes get out of hand now. <laughs> it's all good. God loves us. It's His mercy. It's His grace. And why, preacher, why are you preaching on this again? Because sometimes we need to stop and look and say, wait a minute. I may be putting a lot on me that doesn't need to be there. I may be claiming a lot that I have no right to claim. I've done this. I've done that. No, you haven't. The Lord God's done it for you, and maybe you have not stopped to give Him the glory for it. There it is. Yeah. There it is. That's where it is. Yeah. If we're ever going to fill this church up, we're going to have to realize that. That's all His part. Don't wait on somebody else to invite folks. It never ceases to amaze me how God can talk to somebody someplace and they'll come. Well, you know how we got some of the kids here? They walked by and saw the place and they came in. That doesn't happen. But it did. There's mm -hmm. that light out there. There we go. <laughs> we fix that light. Amen. But here this is. Now, I love this. Even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. See, there is this. You cannot reach God without Jesus Christ. You can't do it. You can never be good enough. You can't. I'm trying. We can't be good enough to get there. Amen. Because there's only one yardstick for good, and it's not yours. God owns it. That's it. It's His yardstick. You know what it is? His yardstick is Jesus Christ. That's where it is. Simply Him. Not me. We don't go to church just when it is convenient. How would you like God to show up when it was convenient for Him? I don't know, I'm not thinking Calvary would happen. Right. I'm not thinking he would have stopped by in Richmond and talked to that kid on a playground. I know he wouldn't have stopped by and talked to that kid in the yard. <laughs> it didn't look very convenient. Of all places for him to stop. My goodness. But he did. And somewhere God stopped him. When the whole world was running and changing and there were wars and there were fightings and there was pestilence all over the place, God took time to talk to you. Whether you accepted that or not. That's right. That's between you and God. Even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved. I get so irritated with preachers that hammer around like they're the greatest thing in the whole world. We're not! I'll tell you something. God used an ass to talk when a prophet wouldn't. That's a donkey. He used one. Amen? So anytime when we preachers start getting good, I'm looking where the bottom of the barrel was and look who I'm even with. Look who's... who's yeah. 
All right, amen. Yeah, God called the donkey. Probably hadn't changed much since then either. Because I've met some guys that just kind of act like that. You know? But here we are. Thank you, brother. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you want to go stand in the corner? No. Well, here we are. And have raised us up together. That's right. I am no big deal. Neither you. Because God got along just fine before I ever came along. And when I'm gone, it's still going to win people. How many of you know that? Because it's not about any of us. It's about Him. But God says, if you listen to me, I'll take you because I've got a place prepared for you. That's right. How about that? Right. In my Father's house are men. Now some have translated that as rooms. I don't care if this place called heaven is a giant condo. I don't care. This new heaven and new earth, I don't plan to spend a whole lot of time at the hotel anyway. I want to be where God says, here's this garden, I've created this. I want to see what God's doing. It doesn't take me long to check out Motel 6. I don't want to be on the ground. I want to see what God's doing. And I think the ocean is beautiful now. I think rainforests are beautiful now. You ain't seen nothing yet, folks. Here we go with all that. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in what heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You and I think differently now since we've come to know the Lord have dealt with it. There are some things that are different to me, that are important to me, that weren't important before. People are important now. It's not whether I get this or whether I get that. It's if I can touch somebody's heart through the power of the Holy Spirit and have them stop and think, whoa, I need to do something about that. That's what's important. I don't care how long you live, you can never live long enough for it to be enough. You can never work enough to amass enough. My wife says, how many guitars do you need? I said, well, and I said, well, there's this, there is this one, there's this one, this one. She didn't think it was funny. She didn't know I wasn't kidding. <laughs> because guitars are just like people. Everyone has a different feel. Everyone has a different sound. And I use that one and this one. But you know, there's a song that I use my 12 string on. And that 12 string guitar, my favorite guitar. Don't play it very often. But you know, when I play it, it just rings, and it brings back all those memories of how my wife and I sacrificed to get that. And that's a great guitar. Then I have another one, but each one of these has a different sound. And guess what? God looks at you, and each one of you have a different sound and a different ring. And there's some guitars that don't ring true. That's it. Ask Randall. He's gone down and played them. Isn't that right? You get down there, some go funk. There's just nothing there. And there's others that you can strum and sit down. And you can do something else and you can go back and that thing's still humming. Guess what? That's what God wants from us. That music that comes out. And that's what it is. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. And guess what? Together that sounded pretty good, didn't it? And some of you that say, well, I can't sing. You were singing right along. Because that's what God hears. The grace that he's given to us. That's what he hears. And it's a sweet, sweet sound. That's his grace. 
And he tells us that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches, uh, riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Are you ever going to reach the Father? It's through the Son. It's not through Muhammad. He's a false prophet. It's not through Buddha. He's a false prophet. Say, how can you say those things? That's hate speech. You know, it's not. It's biblical straight speech. That's right. Oh, yeah. Let me sing that song next week, Old Buddha. How many of you ever heard me do that? Old <laughs> Buddha was a man, I'm sure. That he... I may do that next week. You know what? Because it just really gets down to it and nails down things the way they really are. Because I don't care what you're preaching, if you're not preaching Jesus Christ and crucified, risen, coming again. If you're not preaching that all men have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If you're not preaching there's only heaven and there's only hell. There's no in between ground. And the only way to get to heaven is through the Son, Jesus Christ. Right. If you're not preaching that, you're a false prophet. Right. Amen. And I love you, but this day God doesn't love you enough to die all over for you. Because it's not happening. I'm not going to preach something just because people want to hear it. Amen. My God will hold me accountable. That's right. And so will you in the day of judgment when you look at me and say, you taught me a lot. Yeah. Right. You need to hold me to that. Yeah. He says, for by grace are you saved through faith and that, not of yourselves, it is what? The gift of God. Yeah. It's not something you can work up. It's not something you can hypocritically jump up and claim, oh, I am all this. Yeah, you're all that lost. Because mm -hmm. it's nothing I've done. So, well, preacher, I don't agree with you. Hey, you can disagree with me all you want to. But we're reading God's Word. If you disagree with that, you got a problem. That's where it is. For we are His workmanship. Oh man, yeah, that was good. There's a little song the kids say, God's still working on me. You know, that one. I got news for you. God had a whole shop built just to work on me. <laughs> <laughs> that said there'll be no tears in heaven. But I'm waiting to get there and my guardian angel's gonna look at me and say, I'm glad you're finally here, man. <laughs> you were uh, doesn't say much about frustration. <laughs> yeah. But see, God loves me for who I am. That's His creation. He doesn't always love the things I do. He doesn't. I don't always love the things I do. See, but you're a pastor. You're saved. You're this, you're that, and the other. Yeah, and I'm human. And every once in a while, I have to drive an L.A. track. <laughs> I got that one. Now, I'm telling you this. I, my wife gets... Every once in a while, this Dago stuff comes up. Here I am, down at Disneyland, I'm walking, and there's this other couple in front of me, this dad, and he's got these two little kids, and we're walking. This is like in one of their big parking lots, but it's like a street thing. And, and I've got my two grandkids and my son's with me. I'm looking at, and this guy in a car wants to make a left turn in front of us. We've got a green light to go. And he pulls right up on these little kids and scares his dad half to death. Now, me, kind of sweet as I am, I walk up and look at the guy in the car and say, Hey, what are you doing? I sit there right there. You know, you're not supposed to be that. Right? I'm supposed to be sweet and lovable. Oh, bless you for being an idiot. <laughs> saving his life because here was this dad that was this big and he's got two little kids and they kind of go out in front of him a little bit and it literally scares him and he says, hope you were road home to this guy as he walks away. But at that moment I look at him and I didn't call him anything. I just said, what are you thinking? My wife says, why do you do that? I don't know. Yes, yeah, it's a dago thing. It's a dago thing. It's a dago thing. So I had to, you know, you mess up, you mess up, but I don't think I really messed up, but my wife thinks I do when I do that stuff. But see, it's by grace God loves me anyway. 
because I am not perfect. Not by any stretch of the imagination. But here we are. See, I'm God's workmanship, and He is working on me. Until the day I die, He will still be working in the just and in the Until that day. I want people to understand. I am no big deal. I am just, I think I'm a real deal. I think I'm a real human being that says, my God loves me anyway, and I have a hard time figuring out why. Other than what Jesus Christ said, Father, this is my child. Wherefore, remember, okay, guys, wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision and the God in the flesh made by him. There are those that will always think they're a little bit better than you. But no, they're not. Because we're God's workmanship. Amen. You'll see me every once in a while. You see kids run up to me and they'll get a hug or something like that. Or you'll see me every once in a while get a kid and say, hey, come over here. Let's talk a little bit. Slow down. You know why? Because I love those kids. And I don't want them hurt. I don't want one of our... <clears throat> well, you guys wouldn't do that, right? But I don't want somebody to get angry and say something to hurt one of those children. Because one of those kids is being a kid. And they've been told a hundred times, don't run in the sanctuary. They've been told a hundred times, be quiet in class. And you know what? They're boys and they're going to do the same thing again. You know what? Because like guess what? I still do that. I still act like a kid like that. How do you guys argue with the TV? <laughs> okay, and that's my case. That's us. We've got all of this stuff. But I want you to remember something. In Philippians, he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You can live righteously, can't you? You can come to Christ if He's drawing you. Why would you play a game? Because you know when people come, they have to make a commitment, don't they? And if there's anything we're afraid of in this world, it's a commitment. That's a big deal. Guys are supposed to have this problem of making commitments in relationships. It's probably true. But it's because we have problems in commitment and a whole lot of things. Sure it is. Right now we need a Sunday school teacher. We need two of them. Really? Yeah. We really need two. And we need some people to help. But you want people who are afraid to commit make a commitment. Well if I do that, that means that I miss out and I have to sacrifice. You got it. But you know what, Pastor? Yeah. I'll tell you what, there's a lesson we taught these kids a few weeks ago, and I think God had it planned for me yeah. instead of the teens. Yep. So you might think you're giving up something. You're really gaining something when you teach somebody else. Exactly. There it is there. Yeah. It is right there. The fellowship, the friendship that's there. And guess what? My, But my God, I love this. But my God shall supply all your needs according to the riches and glory by Christ Jesus. People say, oh, great. I'm going to get a rolls. No, I'm going to get I'm going to get a 55 Chevy convertible. Yay, because I need it. No, no. What, I, what God's going to supply me, everything that I need in this life to get there mm -hmm. and take somebody else with me. I'm going to get it. Let me tell you right now. Sheila, can you lead somebody to Jesus Christ if they say, if they come to you and say, I need to know how to get saved? Can you do that? You can, right? Ron, can you do that? Nancy, can you do that? Sure. If you need to know how to find Jesus Christ this morning, guess what? You don't have to take my word for it. There we go. 
Brandon, can you do that? Amen. Amen. Have you done that? Yeah, you have. Amen. See? Here that is. So don't think that you can't be what somebody else is because God's going to do this. It's all grace. It's all grace. And that's why I get excited. Because in this, I want to talk about other things this morning. But for some reason, God wanted us to have a shot of grace this morning. God wanted us to look and say, I can make that decision. I can't stick If you just want to know that there is something separating you and God, you're not sure what it is. You just don't have that happiness that you say, man, I look at Ben, I look at I look at Randy, I look at Ron, I look at Les, and these guys are really happy and they're, you know, they're talking and they're excited all the time. How come I'm how come? You know why? Because they start tapping into that grace. They start accepting that grace. It didn't happen overnight. But once they got saved, they said, wow. This is something. And I guarantee you, the relationship between Christ and the church, us. He wrote in the book of Ephesians, he said, it is like the marriage between a husband and wife. It is that. When you start looking at that, there's some real boundaries in that. And grace says, I can, make, I can help you understand how that is so personal. It's so lovely. I understand. I don't care. You may have been saved a hundred years ago. But you've been afraid to take those steps and you know, give God everything. So there's one thing to have him as a savior, it's another thing to have him as Lord and Master. Man, we want salvation. Nobody wants to go to hell. We want God to touch us. We praise Him for that He does. But I got to guarantee you, if you step out and trust Him, He can just pull you up close and say, this is good work. You can be excited. You can do. But it's making that commitment. When I first moved to Swiss, Reed was pastoring here, I guess, right after I moved for a while. And I was on sabbatical. I was visiting different churches and doing stuff, really asking God what he wanted me to do, whether he wanted me to pastor again or not. If he said no, I, did, I was going to live with that. But one day, I told my wife, I said, you know, I want to go over and, and see Reed. I understand he's pastoring here at this church. Second so we'll see. We were there one Sunday. I invited Reed over to talk to him. And as we were sitting down, I looked at Reed and I said, I said, Reed, do you want to be my friend? Do you want to be friends? Reed just kind of blinked his eyes because we had known each other. But he looked at me and cast down for me and said, well, yeah. I said, okay, here this is. I said, from this point on, we're friends. Period. That's where it is. Period. He had never had anybody else talk to him like that. And we became very good close friends. Sometimes it's knowing about God but sticking out your hand and saying, I don't want to be friends with you. I want more than just forgiveness of sin. I want this relationship to be real. 
You ever thought about that? But that's what it is. It's a real relationship. How do I have this real relationship? Ask. It's that simple. As we bow for a moment, if you want to come and talk to God about anything, you come. We have people that will pray with you. If that's what you want, you are alone. If God's dealing with your heart this morning, just come. If God's dealing with your heart, just come. That's all. Just come. Fathers, we come to you. We praise you for all that you have done. We thank you for today. Father, we thank you for touching hearts. Father, we thank you for having people think because I, looking out here, I see people thinking things over. And Lord, I pray. Touch them, Father. Let them know that if you touch their heart this morning, you open that dialogue with them. Help them to follow through. And we will give you all the praise in Jesus' holy and precious name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you today, do we? One verse of the song together. Amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch <laughs> like me. I was, was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now. You had any doubt in that? You know where I am. Most importantly, you know where Christ is. Talk to him about it. Amen. You are dismissed. May the Lord bless you. Have a great week. Look for you on Tuesday. We're going to do some good study.